From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, coming to you from our Boston area studios. Uh, the Cube is happy to participate in the Cloud Health Cloud Live event. Uh, Corey Quinn and myself going head to head with the great cloud debate. Uh, but of course, uh, one of the things we always love is to talk to the practitioners. Uh, and so thank you to the Cloud Health team uh, for bringing us the guest that I'm about to speak with, to you with, uh, Patrick Heatherton. He is the Vice President of Tech Ops at Jobcase, also a Boston area company. Uh, Patrick, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. All right, so so let's start, if you could just uh, give our audience a little bit, uh, Jobcase, what, what the company does and uh, your role uh, in the org. Sure, so, you know, Jobcase, um, we like to position ourselves as the company that is the people first social platform for, um, you know, empowering America's workers. So we've been working with the frontline workers for a number of years. Uh, helping them secure jobs. Um, when you looked at uh, companies like LinkedIn or other companies that cater towards more advanced degrees, we're doing more of the frontline workers, the blue collar workers. About 80 to 85% of our um, members don't have advanced degrees. And we are you know, currently at about 110 million members right now. Uh, we get 25 million unique visitors a month, um, but you know, we're basically trying to help those frontline workers navigate through these challenging times right now. Well, yeah, Patrick, I have to imagine that right now uh, with the global pandemic going on and uh, you know jobs in, in a bit of flux, uh, you, your team must be really busy, especially if you talk about you know, frontline, uh, you know, there's some very large you know, manufacturing and service companies that are doing massive hiring. I know I, I poked around you at the job case site quite a bit and saw you know, plenty in the in the Boston area. So, if if you could, you know, is that you know, architecturally, is there anything you need to do differently? Is you know, how are you thinking things scale and adjust and to manage uh, with uh, kind of the the spike in traffic that I expect you're seeing? Yeah, so it, it's been interesting. You know, we've seen a lot of different peaks and valleys throughout, um, but right now, what we're doing is we're trying to help uh, a lot of folks. There's certain folks who aren't comfortable going back to the workforce at this time or can't because of daycare situations. So we've done a lot of things about filtering for jobs that are remote only. We've done a lot of things about navigating the unemployment uh, lines and things like that on how to make sure that you're focused on getting things. And those who do want to go back to work, we've been working with some partners to make sure that, that those opportunities are presented to our user base. Excellent. Well, uh, the, your session uh, for the Cloud Health Cloud Live event is about security. Um, before we get into the security piece, just your role as tech ops. Can you give us a little bit of you know how that fits into the landscape uh, at, at Jobcase? You know, uh, how do you look at uh, tech ops? Uh, you know, my understanding, tech ops very similar to you know SRE, uh, big you know buzz job uh, lately for site reliability engineers. So you know, what's your responsibility? How does that fit through the rest of the org? Sure. So I joined uh, Jobcase about four years ago, and you know it was um, I was given the role of technical operations or tech ops, which basically meant everything that the developers weren't doing uh, from th the technology side. So it was more of IT uh, onboarding and security uh, of the laptops and systems there. Uh, a little bit of uh, facility work as far as making sure the office was set up properly and things like that, but also the DevOps or SRE team reported to me. Uh, when I first started four years ago, it was one IT person and one DevOps person, and now we have six DevOps engineers and three IT people. Excellent. Well, uh, security, of course, you know, in general, has been a, a very uh, important topic. Uh, something you're speaking on. Uh, you know, I've been hearing for years the discussion of you know, security can't be a bolt-on. It can't be an afterthought. It is everyone's responsibility. Uh, you know, the DevOps movement, of course, uh, has put that you know really front and center. So, uh, tell us a little bit about you know how cybersecurity fits into your role uh, and a little taste of uh, what you're going to be sharing uh, at the, the Cloud Health Cloud Live. Sure. So, you know, um, it's gone through so many iterations. I mean, you've got DevSecOps, you've got you know the SREs, you've got you know Risk Ops. Um, you know, we, we don't tend to get caught up in the buzzwords too much, but more about roles and responsibilities. 
So, you know, we started off as traditional dev and ops teams that basically dev wrote the code, we deployed the code. Uh, we found that we didn't scale very well uh, at that, and we wanted to make sure that we could get a little bit more velocity in the place. So we rolled out the DevOps model and things like that and started giving more responsibility to the development team. That freed up a lot of my team's time uh, to basically go out and start looking at more secure ways of um, letting our software go out. So that whole shift left mentality where we wanted to find things a little bit quicker, make sure we were doing some baseline uh, examples of secure practices and things like that. So that was really where we started focusing in on and what we've been doing for the past year and trying to roll this process out. Okay, uh, when I, I did a little poking around online, um, I, I understand uh, you're also involved in the Kubernetes rollout in, in your company. Uh, in early days of container security was, you know, a hot button topic. Feels like we've made some good progress on that, but may, maybe if you could connect the dots between uh, what you're doing on the security side and, you know, general con containers, I'd love to hear more about your Kubernetes deployment too. Sure, so we do everything through templates, through cloud formation. So we kind of lock them down to a certain um, security groups and things like that, but we're also having a rollout of making sure things are patched in a cohesive manner. Uh, so we have a rollout process for, you know, running the latest versions of code, updating everything. And, you know, the, that's what my team really focuses on is making sure that we have a clear, concise process for the development team to focus in on and roll out so that they're comfortable with it whether it goes through all the environments, so our dev environment, our um, integration environment, our staging environment, all the way up through production, it's the same process. Yeah, and how, how do you look at that, uh, uh, kind of the line between the developers and the infrastructure? So tech ops usually is, uh, you know, building the place and, you know, not the ones that are actually building the new products. Um, and, and how does Kubernetes fit into that overall discussion? So we have a bunch of different teams that we work with, three primarily, and each one's at a different phase. And I think that's the thing that you have to realize. You have to do what works well for your company. Um, so certain teams do more on the infrastructure side where we kind of give them base um, guidelines as to what sizes and things like that for infrastructure they should be using. And others, we have to do a little more handholding and make sure that they understand, you know, okay, let's take a step back and understand what you're trying to accomplish, what kind of traffic patterns you want to uh, roll out and get a little bit deeper understanding and work with them. So each team's a little different, but um, we really blur the line a lot between dev and ops. I mean, it, it's the only way you really develop fast and secure. Excellent. Uh, what about automation? How does that fit into uh, everything we've been talking about here? Yeah, so we've spent a ton of time on that. So. Again, with the cloud formation templates, it's basically you could blow up an account and just rerun the uh, scripts and recreate the account from scratch with a bunch of uh, auto scaling groups. So if nodes go down, they get replaced automatically. Um, so there's all sorts of automation built in. I think you know we've cut down all our alerts tenfold over the past year just by all these automation scripts and. We get notifications that things have happened, but there's usually no human interaction anymore, you know, for simple hardware failures. The, the, we're investigating more of a hard problem right now uh, as far as some incompatibility or difference that may have come with an upgrade. All right, so Pat, Patrick, in, in how does your organization look at cloud? Are you all in a public cloud or using, you know, multiple clouds, uh, you know, what, what, what's, what's that uh, environment? Yeah, so we uh, were born in AWS and we've stayed in AWS. We are not multi-cloud, um, but we do our DR plan in there and everything, but 100% in the public. Okay, uh, excellent. So, uh, you know, you're obviously using Cloud Health uh, as part of your overall solution. How, how, how do they uh, fit into that discussion and, you know, give us a little bit about how long you've been using them and uh, what you've been seeing? Sure, so we started with their, um, cost program cloud health and we wanted to get a you know better understanding of all of our costs especially when we're going to this more distributed model where developers were had the ability to roll out infrastructure we wanted to make sure not so much that they had budgets but had an understanding of how much they were spending uh, so when you go from that centralized control as to releasing control to individuals with that control comes responsibility and you know we wanted to make sure we're making good business decisions. So we rolled out um, Cloud Health to all the users um, to be able to see what each program was costing. 
we did that about two years ago and we've really just finalized it the last couple of months of making sure that everything was tagged appropriately and engineers can see how much each application costs to run. And then uh, last year, we uh, decided to look at some security programs to kind of help us launch that. We're doing a lot of stuff by hand and using some of the AWS services um, but we wanted something to kind of roll out more to the executive team to be able to see how we're doing uh, as far as, you know, benchmarks and things like that. So we looked at uh, a couple different programs, but we had such a really good experience with Cloud Health on the onboarding. We decided to use VMware Secure State um, and have been rolling that out and using that on my team primarily right now and starting to roll it out to all the dev teams. It's really interesting, Patrick. You know, you, you've been around long enough. I, I'm sure that there have been times where uh, security or the billing or all those other things is something that somebody else took care of. If I'm, you know, kind of a typical business person, what you're laying out sounds like uh, there's, you know, communication, collaboration. You know, the business and the technical side working together. You know, are, are we are we getting closer to that? You know, we're all pulling in the same direction and you know, have clear visibility as to what the business needs and what the kind of the technical and financial pieces are? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's definitely been uh, a joint effort. I work with, you know, the finance team on a regular basis to kind of give forecasts and things like that, especially during these challenging times, you have to know how much you're spending on uh, these bills. I mean, the cloud is one of our biggest bills, uh, obviously, for a job case. So we wanted to have a good understanding there, but we also want to drive the business forward. We're working with partners right now during these times to make sure we're getting, you know, uh, even some free services as far as doing some uh, trials and things like that to ensure that we're being cost conscious for the company, but also driving initiative forward. Yeah, uh, Patrick, is there anything out there, uh, you know, in, in the ecosystem that is on your wish list is that would make uh, your company and your job uh, even easier? Oh, great question. Um, you know, I think better integration between all the programs. I mean, you've got a lot of best of breed programs out there. So you worry about technology sprawl, uh, you know, from application monitoring to system monitoring to cost monitoring and things like that. There is no silver bullet. Um, so, you know, if there was, that would be great, but you have to kind of pick the best of breed in a lot of cases. Um, we kind of go with the 80-20 rule. If a program does 80%, but it integrates with other programs, then we're going to use that over one that's maybe 90-95%, uh, just for ease of use and implementation. Great. Well, Patrick, uh, I want to give you the final word. Uh, any other final takeaways that you would share with your peers as to uh, things they should looking, be looking at or things they should prepare their teams for? Uh, to, to be more effective and more secure. Yeah, I would say don't be afraid of change, but also work with your dev teams. I, if you make it too difficult for them or it becomes an us versus them, it's just never going to work. Uh, it has to be a partnership. They have to buy into the things that you're trying to do. And in most cases they will, they want to do the right things, but you, you, you've got to kind of eliminate the noise from them and make sure that they're only getting the things that are important to the company. Well, Patrick, thank you much for, for sharing and absolutely uh, a very important service job cases uh, performing, especially uh, right now when, you know, jobs and as, as you said, you know, flexible uh, work environments are critically important. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, be sure to check out the Cloud Health Cloud Live event. I'm Stu Miniman. You'll see me and Corey Quinn in the great cloud debate. And uh, thank you for watching theCUBE.